so welcome to another short thought. Um, this time I wanted to focus on getting to know your voices and this might seem like a really strange topic but it's one that's close to my heart. If you'd have met me um, about a decade ago the idea of getting to know my voices just wouldn't have scanned. It would be so out of step with what I wanted. I just wanted to get rid of them, not explore them in any way. So why, why am I doing this? Um, I think for two reasons. The first is the problem for me with the voices was that some of them felt like very big, omnipotent, omnipotent kind of unknowable forces that um, had control over me in my life. And until I got to know them, it was very hard for me to challenge that and realise that there was some impact that I could have on those voices. Um, for the, the other kind of reason, I guess, is that within the hearing voices movement, we often think about how voices can have important messages to tell us about our lives um, wherever these voices come from and unless we can kind of get to know them a little bit it's a little hard to untangle what that message might be. So how did I start to get to know my voices? I guess initially I used things that were already out there so um, check out the Maastricht interview, check out um, Ron Coleman and Mike Smith's working with voices victim to victor books and some of Rufus May's work all of these things have some, some kind of ways, interviews and structures for kind of questioning and getting to know your voices. But I think for me, what I found really helpful is more creative strategies. I think sometimes words aren't enough. So I'm going to share with you a few of the things that I've used in the hope that they'll be kind of like springboards for your own inspiration. There isn't one strategy that works for everybody and hopefully we'll use this and create something completely different. So the first one is scrapbooking. Um, making a book with pages for each of each of your voices. Um, for me, this is like with each page, I focus on the voice and think about kind of what's that voice look like, what do they sound like, what kind of mental images do I get? Because I'm not so arty, I tend to use collages, so I'll get pictures off the internet or kind of draw pictures sometimes myself and try and capture the range of emotions and feelings and thoughts and words that come with that voice. So, for example, Blue, one of my child voices, um, she initially is very, very frightened, very, very scared, so you'd see that in the picture. But then if I listen more closely to her, she's also got a bit of fire, a bit of spunk. She's, she's kind of, she's quite cheeky. Um, she's quite caring. There's certain things that she likes that helps calm her down. There's certain things she doesn't like. So her collage will have all of that in. And then if you move to one of the voices that I find more difficult to listen to, so one of the not yet. Um, initially their, their page was just kind of like hematite, just completely um, yeah, unpenetrable. It was kind of very hard to look at and, and so different from everyone else's pages. And that kind of got me thinking and I think curiosity has been the most important thing in this, this, this process for me. Because I was thinking, well why, why is their page different to everybody else's? Um, what's beneath that hematite? Is, is there anything more to these voices than just the, that kind of sheen? And yeah, that led me to the place of looking at Russian dolls. And the awesome thing about Russian dolls is you've got the outside layer, but if you open them up, you'll see something inside. If you open them up again, another doll inside that. And I started to think about the not yet voices and, and Russian dolls and kind of if you've got the hematite on the outside, what's beneath that? And I draw this out. And beneath it there was fire and burning and pain which was quite hard to bear actually so this is why the coping strategies we'll do in the next short thought are so useful to help you kind of through that process and having some support but then the next time i came back to it i tried to look beneath that and focus on the voices and go was there anything else there and there was pain and there was suffering and there was fear and there was a lot of other emotions that those voices held not just the shiny kind of unknowable and I think underneath it I found a little child who was terrified and just was really parroting back what had been told to them. So that's the scrapbooking. Um, something else I found really useful is to draw kind of a map, a visual representation of my system. You could do this with your family, you know, and your friends, mapping out who um, is related to who, kind of what the relationships are like, are people nearer, further apart. And this is something I do with my voices. So I'll start with me in the centre and then choose one of my voices and think, well, how, do that, how does that voice relate to me? Are they near? Are they far? 
than the next? How does the, does the next voice relate to both of us? Are they close to the voice? Are they closer to me? Are they on another page because no one wants to talk to anyone? And slowly and slowly you kind of build up this picture where you've got some voices that might be behind walls, some voices that are hiding in the corner, some that are kind of looking after each other or looking after me. And it becomes this kind of, this, this more, comes kind of more clarity I guess. The thing about hearing many voices is that it can become very messy. You're not sure what you're doing. It's very hard to focus on one voice in particular. By actually mapping this out it's helped me kind of exercise some 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 control over which voice I listen to but also some understanding of how this all works. Right the next and the, the last strategy I'm gonna kind of share with you is um, kind of the check-in. So in hearing voices groups, we often kind of go around and just say, well, how's your week been? What's going on? Stuff like that. And I think for me, it's been really important for me to do that with my voices. The reason for this is that sometimes I kind of have this feeling that I can't really explain. I might be feeling dead as if I'm not really real anymore. I might be experiencing some real anxiety when in my sort of outside world, there seems like there's nothing to account for it. And what I found is often that one of the voices is holding that anxiety or that feeling. And unless I inquire about that, it's hard to kind of get to the bottom of it. So what I'll do if there's something like that that comes up or there's some bereavement or some kind of situation at work that I'm struggling with, I'll step back and check in with everybody. I do this visually because it's hard to kind of like do it all auditory because you know, there's just so much babble. So I will um, get a paper, I'll kind of draw a circle for everybody um, in the in my system, including me, um, as if they're all sitting around a table. And then I'll um, concentrate on each voice in turn and just think, well, what are they feeling? What are they thinking? What's the emotions? What kind of thing would they like to put in that circle? And then move on to the next and the next. And for those that don't want to take part or I can't connect with, that's fine. They have an empty bubble just for now. And then once the circle's complete, I'll just step back from it and look and just see, get an overview of where I'm at and where my voices are at. If there's one of the voices that are particularly distressed, I might want to connect with those and kind of, like you would a child perhaps, do something very comforting or have a chat with that particular voice. Um, or maybe talk with somebody that I trust about um, how I might deal with, with some of the things that have come out of the exercise. So... These are just a few of the things. Obviously, if you're going to start to explore your voices, you might need some coping strategies and some ways of dealing with the distressing stuff that may come up. So, um, yeah, it comes with a kind of a health warning. But I hope that some of this has been useful and it's maybe given you some ideas of where you might yourself go in order to get to know your voices in your way. Thanks very much for listening.